Why don't you do it my way? Why don't you do it the way I want you to do it? Why don't you do it the way that I think it's best to do it? And God says, I've got a plan. And who knows, maybe he wanted me to see all those wonderful houses along that road. I don't know, but God has a plan and God keeps his promise. And Jesus said, the promise of the Father is for each and every one of us. And he says, now what's going to happen is that the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And you're going to be filled with dynamite power. The Greek word is dunamis. We get our English words dynamo from that. We get our another word dynamite from that. And God says, explosive dynamite power is going to come upon you. And because of that, you're going to be able to be my witness. What does a witness do? A witness tells what they saw, what they heard, what they experienced. They just give their account of it. And that's what God has said to us. That's what we're called to do, is to share the good news with anybody that we can. Anybody that is asking questions, that's what Peter said. If anyone asks you a question of why you believe, be ready to be able to answer them. Now, sometimes we have to wait to say something before someone asks the question. And then sometimes we get the prompting or the pushing, so to speak, from the Holy Spirit to do something. But he says, you're gonna have power to do that. Have you ever been challenged where you feel like you wanna tell somebody about the Lord, but for some reason you feel intimidated? For some reason you feel shy about that? For some reason you think like, maybe I'm not going to be able to explain it the way that I really want to. Maybe they're not going to listen to me. You see, that's the intimidation of the enemy trying to keep back your testimony, your story about what Christ has done for you. And God just simply wants you to be obedient when he's calling you to do that and step out and take the chance. But you can't do it in your own power. You've got to do it by the power of the Holy Spirit. So 10 days after this dissertation, we find in the book of Acts chapter uh, 2, verse number 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. So what happens is, at this point now, all of the followers, these followers of Christ, 120 of them, they're all gathered together in an upper room. They're all gathered together, and the Bible says they were in one accord. So in other words, they were in unity. It's so very important for Christians to be unified, for Christians to have the same mind, for Christians to have the same desires, and for Christians to have the same thought. That's why the enemy wants to distract us and break our ranks where we can argue with one another, where we can take offenses really deep inside and then break off relationships with people. But God says, when we are in one accord, when we are in unity, I think it's a daily prayer that I actually have to pray that the body of Christ would be unified, but that this church would be unified, that we would have a unity of heart, that we would have the same mind. And that same mind is that we would want to bring a message of hope to all people, whoever they are, wherever they are, however they are. And we can do that by our story. Your story is important. Some people, I've heard them say, well, I don't really have a testimony. I, I never was a, a criminal. I never was an alcoholic. Or I never was a drug addict. Or I never did this or that. Well, maybe that's part of your testimony. That God preserved you from that. That you followed the Lord. That you did those things. But we all have something to say to somebody. Even, it, even if it is as simple as things going wrong on the job, and someone looks at you and say, doesn't this make you mad? You might be able to say, well, I don't really like it, but I used to be such an angry person. But you know what? God really changed my life. Stop there. Stop right there. Get that dramatic pause and see if they ask a question. If they don't, maybe that's the prompting of the Lord to not talk anymore. Let them think about what you had just said. Maybe let them think and they could be thinking, wow. I get angry so easy. I wonder what they mean by God help them. And then maybe another time there'll be an opportunity to share or maybe there'll be another time where they will actually ask you. So they were all gathered together and there came suddenly a sound from heaven. It was like a mighty rushing wind, the Bible says. And it filled the whole place where they were sitting. I love that word sitting because sitting indicates an, a posture of rest. It indicates that, you know, we're, we're taking the load off, so to speak. And you know what? God says to us, are you tired? Are you burned out? Are you weary? Are you brokenhearted? Are you just giving up on trying to be that person that God loves? He said, come to me and I'll give you real rest.